uh, I'm here to present a work uh, uh, done by my student uh, Rajkumar Maithi and uh, Ankit Singh Rawat, who is a postdoc jointly at MIT and uh, at UMass Amherst. Ankit did the lion's share of this work, and uh, Ankit is here. He would be presenting the poster in the poster session, and he's also in the job market for your information. <laughs> Right, so uh, instead of going into the gory detail of uh, what we did, I'm here to advocate a simple idea brought back to daylight by this uh, paper by uh, Lee uh, et al. in 2016. Um, and this is, the idea is simple and that's why it is also implementable. I think it's really interesting. Uh, it talks about large-scale distributed learning problems that runs over many, many processors uh, in a cluster or in a cloud and uh, what happens is, the gist of the talk is, uh, if there are straggling servers or straggling processors in the system, that that becomes, uh, become the bottleneck of the system. So everything is slowed down by them. And uh, to prevent that, or to mitigate that, you should use uh, some classic oldest techniques of error correcting codes. Uh, and what we fit in is to, we say that uh, you should decide what to code based on the application, and there is a systematic way to decide that. So that's the main message of the talk, and I'm going to go over all of these bullet points in the next few minutes. Right, so we are talking about really large scale of computation nowadays. For example, if you want to learn uh, a deep neural networks, uh, it is a lot of layers, it's uh, millions of variables that you have to know. So you distribute this work over different servers. In general, as in the case of parallel and distributed computing, you have a master node that supervises it, there may or may not be a master node, and there is a bunch of worker nodes, and you have some data tasks to learn from data, so you distribute parts of your data to different servers, and then each of them perform some function on the partial data they have, they send it back to the master node, and there is an aggregation of this. Right? Now, what happens is some of the time, these worker nodes are too slow, so I picked up this, uh, this plot from uh, a paper by Tandon et al. Uh, from 2016. Uh, it shows that if you have about, say, 50 servers, uh, 50 workers, then about 40 of them are doing pretty well, but then there is a lot of, about 10 of them, that's like 20% of them, uh, that takes a lot of time to send back your result, and since the master has to work, wait for all of the workers to get good accuracy of whatever it's predicting, uh, the system is bottlenecked by these slow workers. Right? And that's, uh, that's a serious problem. It's a well-known problem. Uh, it's, uh, there is this uh, sur fantastic survey type uh, paper by Dean and Barroso, uh, Barroso which appeared in uh, the communications of ACM a uh, couple of few years back, and talks about this issue as a serious issue. Right, so uh, what's the idea? To mitigate that, uh, you do not wait for the stragglers, just work with whatever you have got. But before you distribute the data to the, st uh, to the workers, you should code up your data. And that's the idea that uh, was presented in this paper by Lee and others. Uh, and what do we mean by coding up your data? It just means that simply use an error correcting code to encode your data. Just uh, giving, giving you a brief example of what an error correcting code means. It says you have uh, some data that you, uh, that you, and you add some redundancy to the end of the data, like you have this string of zeros and one, you just expand it by adding some redundancy. And if then there is some unavailability in the data, there are some errors, you can just use a decoder, use that redundancy to build back your data, right? So that's an error correcting code. There are various families of error correcting codes available. So what you do is, before you send your data over to servers, you just code it up. Now, let me just give you a simple example in the rest uh, five minutes that I have. Uh, so suppose you are trying to solve a large-scale linear regression problem. So you have n samples, a lot of samples, and then corresponding levels. You want to fit a linear model into this data. So you want to fit a line through these data sets. Right, so that means uh, you have uh, your data matrix to be X, the level matrix to be Y, you want to find some vector, you want to learn some vector theta that when you multiply it with X, you get back Y. So what you do is uh, this uh, usual, uh, you want to minimize the L2 loss in, with respect to theta, uh, and there might be some other constraints on theta that's represented by this regularizer. 
the usual algorithm that you run is called a gradient descent algorithm. You take up a gradient of this loss function over here, and then uh, you move towards the direction of the gradient, and you update your estimate of theta vector in each of the directions. So what do you do when you distribute this over servers? What do you do when you have really large data set? One way to do this would be to just take your data, which are like this. Um, so this, this n m, so basically what we are doing is, you see right over here, I don't have a pointer. So this, in this expression, the only thing that is updating every time is this theta t. Everything else, this m and b, are fixed with respect to whatever your data is. So what you do is you, in each time of this iteration, you just do this matrix vector multiplication. So instead, so while you do that, you just part, divide this part of the matrix and vector to, to all of the workers, right? So they just do part of this matrix uh, vector multiplication, send you back the data, right? So that's, that's the partial estimate of theta, and then you accumulate. Now, instead, what we are suggesting to do, or whatever uh, Lee et al. suggested you to do, is to encode the data, so multiply it with some systematic generator matrix of some error correcting code. So what happens is now there are some redundant workers that are getting part of the data, but those, are, uh, those servers are really redundant. So if you have 50 servers, there are 10 of them which are redundant, and you don't have to wait for all of the servers to respond. So the, the process would inherit, since this is a linear process, the error correcting capability of the code will translate into data even when you take the gradients, which is again a linear operator. So you will have the capability of recovering back the data even if some of the servers do not respond in time. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And uh, what we are saying is that you shouldn't just blindly code the data. You should code a function of data that's relevant to your loss function. So, and we are getting fantastic speed up results. You should come to the poster and see because it's really, I can show you the results uh, and we are doing best com in comparison to whatever is up there, but it's, I don't really have the time to go over all of the gory detail of uh, how these experiments work. Uh, please do please come to the poster uh, and thank you very much. Uh, can I have a question? Yes. Sure, so thank you for this talk. Uh, I have a third question about this talk first. Um, basically, you're solving the same problem as to the um, 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 X paper about gradient coding publishing SML last year. So the question is, what is so different from your basic idea? Because it seems that you're basically um, changing the, um, the, the matrix, right? I, I'm changing the uh, coding matrix, but they were basically using a, um, a more kind of naive approach for, but, but for more general setting, but you're using a particular LDPC code for a matrix uh, uh, modification. If you look at the, um, the, the least paper in 2016, they're basically saying the very similar thing, but using RS code, and you're just using LDPC code. So that reason my second uh, question, which no, is, is why would you care about LDPC code instead of the in general, uh, instead of the other code? Uh, uh, second question is, uh, if you use okay. this approach, basically you would assume two different uh, communication within each iteration in machine communication. Basically it means that you're gonna double your um, bandwidth requirement, and if you're really computing large scale linear regression, that'll be a huge problem for you guys. So certainly it's, uh, it seems that the whole framework can only work for um, matrix multiplication. And if you're looking at a, um, you know, the new network you described, say AlphaGo, this will never work. So, so as an extra challenge, you have about 10 seconds to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, <laughs> okay, so let me at least answer the first question sure. and then we can take the second question offline. Of course. So, uh, you asked what is the difference, so instead why, we are not only just using LDPC code instead of RS code, we could have still used RS code, but they, in the Lee et al. paper, they were encoding the data. What we are doing is encoding the second moment of the data, so and that makes some crucial difference. Right? So it, and this, we are do, encoding the second moment of the data because the loss function that we, uh, we have calculated, the square loss, when we take the gradient, the second moment come in. So we can have some different loss. There are log loss and other things. So and the second, encoding the second moment of the data would not be a good idea there. So what we are saying is instead of just 
the encoding the data, which is the X matrix, you should encode some function of the data which is relevant to your application, and there is a systematic way to find that function. So it's not that we are just substituting a new code, it's something else as well. And LDPC codes have some advantage in using in compared to RS codes as well because of their super fast decoding algorithm which you can, you can actually use the number of iterations of decoding of LDPC code as a tunable parameter here and you can show that, uh, you can tune that to like um, control the convergence of the gradient descent algorithm that you have. So all of the, so all of the orals uh, today, thank you, will also oh, be at the, uh, <laughs> at the poster session. So, so please uh, make sure to come and talk to them as well in person at the poster session. Let's thank our, our speaker again.